Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. All in crypto here. And today, as it is the first Monday of the month, we thought what better way to kick the month off than to release a Cardano ADA video. It's been a little while since we've covered Cardano, and we're going to be getting into it all in this video. We're really going to be looking at Cardano as a project in this one because it continues to thrive despite the kind of a market that we are in. And we're going to be showing you that um, across a number of metrics, whether that be wallets, whether that be development activity, whether that be the DeFi involvement um, and everything in between. And we're going to start things off with a clip uh, from Charles Hoskinson at Rare Evo talking about um, the age of governance and, you know, what's happened in the space of him being at Rare Evo today, whenever it was, to the previous year, you know, everything that's happened um, since then. And there's been a lot go on. We know what's happened from the market's point of view, um, but from a project point of view, it's just gone from strength to strength. And we continue to champion Cardano um, predominantly because I think it is one of the best blockchain choices for sovereignty and um, control over your um, identity, wealth, and belongings. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving into a world where everything is going to be tokenized and tracked by governments. And if you look at what Satoshi did, um, he essentially tried to move away from that in the forms of a peer-to-peer -peer electronic system. Okay, that was his vision in the Satoshi white paper. Uh, he specifically mentioned the uh, involvement of institutions and how he wanted to get away from that and create a peer-to-peer, -peer, me and you, system that we can use outside of the parameters of that. Then you had Ethereum, which of course Charles Hoskinson was a part of, that actually looked to expand that and said, okay, well, rather than just um, having a uh, an e-cash system, something we can, we can transact with, why don't we add capabilities to it like contracts, choices, decisions, um, that we can utilize the underlying technology that blockchain is to eradicate any kind of third-party involvement. And Cardano is a, a predecessor of all of that. And it is probably, I personally believe this, one of the pioneers in that. It upholds self-sovereignty, to the highest of standards. And actually, this is why we have such a um, big emphasis put on Voltaire, which is the age of uh, governance. The age of Voltaire is the age of governance. And I think this is something that's massively overlooked, but where we currently are in history, where we currently are in time, it couldn't be of um, more importance. And actually, Cardano is one of the... Uh, this is what I, I often think that Bitcoin maxis if they only took the time to look into Cardano, they would actually really um, enjoy it as a blockchain. And it's one of the most organic, i.e. not VC funded, not shilled, not this, not that products out there. And I think it's going to continue to do well and go on a Bitcoin style path of adoption, which is an organic one um, incentivized by the likes of Freedom and other such things. So that's really why we continue to back Cardano. Um, I'm invested in many, many projects. Cardano happens to be one of them. I also run a stake pool that before we get into everything, I just want to give a quick shout out to. It has been nothing short of um, quite hard to be a stake pool operator throughout the current market. Now, I'm not saying, oh, poor me or anything of the sort. I'm a very, very lucky um, guy or a very blessed individual, um, and I don't look at things like that. But if you do have Cardano, please do consider delegating to the all-in stake pool. It is my personal stake pool. We've been running it now um, for over two years, uh, and we're going to continue to do so. And you're seeing a large amount of capitulation with small stake pools. We are still a small stake pool at 2.8 million, but we plan on riding it out. And we've been running this pool even when it's been unprofitable to do so. And we continue uh, and are determined to continue to be here um, helping to support the Cardano network. So quick shout out, a little bit of selfless promotion. I want to start things off with a clip of Charles Hoskinson, and then we're going to dive into a variety of different metrics um, relating to Cardano that paint a very different picture to the price. Let's get into the video, guys. It's been a year. Lots happened, huh? You know, last time I was on this stage, uh, we said, hey, the age of governance has begun, and there's a lot to do, a lot to build. So what do we do? Well, worked on 1694. Anybody participate in SIP 1694? 
show of a few hands. There we go. And then we got Intersect, the members-based organization that finally got established, starting to recruit, starting to grow. Got the Constitution underway. There's going to be a convention next year in Argentina. Yeah, there's some people excited. And you know what? Enormous amount of stuff shipped while working on governance, which is the most complicated thing I think any cryptocurrency can do because basically you're building an on-chain government of a digital nation with 4 million people, more than 100 countries. Kind of a fun thing. Hydra shipped. Mithril shipped. Node 8.x shipped. All kinds of updates shipped. People are building. We're number one for development activity right now amongst all the cryptocurrencies. TVL grew by over 200% in a downturn. How about that? Transaction volume's up. We're at 8 million native assets. And Masari is finally writing nice stuff about us. How about that? That's what an ecosystem looks like. It's not the sudden spikes and sexy, fun bull markets and you know, cool stuff in 2021 or 2017. It's the continuous, endless, relentless pursuit of perfection. Japanese call it kodawari, the relentless pursuit of perfection. That's what we do. We wake up every single day and we grind as an ecosystem. And it's hard to build. How many people are building in this room? Do you feel like you have all the funding you need, all the staff you need, all the love you need, all the media you need? No, it's hard, but you're here. And because you're, because you're here in the bad times, in the down times, means one day you get to enjoy the good times. You see, the people in this room, I've always believed in the rooms like this room, people who have the right to actually dream and change things. Go ahead and leave that clip there. Charles Hoskinson is actually one of the reasons why I first came across um, Cardano because I feel like I have very similar views to him. Hopefully one day we can get Charles on the channel for an interview, um, something that I am working on. Um, we've interviewed many builders within the Cardano space, many DAP developers, many um, layer two infrastructure developers, people that are trying to add plugins to Cardano and everything in between. Um, but we really do think Cardano is a special blockchain. Uh, and actually, Ouroboros, I believe, is probably the best staking mechanism that there is. And actually, I think Polkadot um, will attest to that as it's a very similar model that, that, that they kind of, um, I don't want to say took from Ouroboros, but learned from Ouroboros and, and then applied Grandpa on top of it. That is essentially the Polkadot consensus mechanism. For proof of stake, I, I believe it's second to none. Um, and it's been, this is why we want to look at some analytics. It's been an interesting year. But the analytics have painted a very different picture to the price. If you do weather the good, the bad times, you will be here for the good. Uh, and that was me in 2018, 2019. We didn't create the YouTube channel till early 2020, um, just before the March crash, of course, which we kind of um, endured. Um, and then, of course, Cardano did very well. It went from cents to $3. I think a run similar to that, maybe not on the same magnitude, is coming. That's just my own opinion. Um, and ultimately, Moving away from the price, we genuinely believe in Cardano's vision and goal. Um, and that's why we continue to champion it on this channel. I think it is, again, the best chance. I think there's other blockchains that are similar at self-sovereignty. Um, and certainly when we're moving into a world where CBDCs and everything are, everything will be tokenized. They'll tax you at every point and you won't have much say in anything. You know, the Western world is not a democracy, ladies and gentlemen. And then people will say and give a horrific scenario of a dictatorship and say, well, how can you compare the two? It's very obvious that they're not comparable, but um, is one crime better than the other? You know, of course, one may be more grievous, but they're both crimes. Anyway, um, I want to move on from that and get into some metrics. Let's start things off with um, top 50 projects by core developers. Now, Ethereum, of course, is first. Ethereum was first. It has that first mover advantage. Um, and we don't hate Ethereum on this channel. I think a lot of people think that we have something against Ethereum. We don't. I actually think Ethereum is great. We all owe it a lot in this space, including Cardano. I know there's a big beef between the communities, but I think that's just rather petty. And, and I think it's, it's people... Uh, throwing shade at one another and it doesn't really solve anything. But you can see Ethereum has 174 um, developers. Polkadot, of course, has 157, another one of our favorite blockchains, along with Kusama, which share a development pool. Uh, Kusama is the canary network for Polkadot. Um, and of course, they share um, developers. And then you have Cardano at 159. 
third in the entire crypto space. And the flack it gets is not warranted by any kind of factual data. It's just engagement farming, in my opinion. This was something else that I shared. Total product by development activity in August alone to back up the information that we just shared with you. Polkadot, you've got Cardano, Hedera, Chainlink. We like both of these projects, by the way, and many more. Um, we are not a, a Cardano channel. We cover most blockchains because we see a lot of value in a lot of different places in the crypto space. We just happen to be a Cardano fan, boy, I guess, um, uh, along with, uh, you know, it, it makes up a part of my portfolio. So ADA weekly on chain transaction volume is up a, sorry, 1,726% since late January. Wow. Price has done the opposite, as you can see here. Price is an interesting point. You're essentially around you where you were at the start of the year when we started buying crypto again, um, including ADA. I will uh, disclose that. Um, so we haven't really made much on Cardano, but other altcoins we've done okay on. And of course, Bitcoin, has, has uh, our revival call in 2023 was somewhat right, and we'll see how the year um, ends. But the cheaper Cardano gets, you know, the, the better in some respects if you're a long-term investor. So Cardano is still seeing rising on-chain transaction volume despite its suppressed market value uh, compared to its April local top. It plays, or utility plays an important role in any bounce, and this combined with ADA's um, social dominance is still promising. Cardano has, oh, no, I don't want to say the best, one of the best communities out there, and we, 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 we're we at the front of it. If you look at Cardano content creators, our videos get significantly more than most. In fact, we are one of the top Cardano content creators via, uh, via viewing volume uh, in terms of views that we get on the videos. And we're very honored to be a part of that. Um, if we move on now to DeFi and TVL, what a year it has been. Since 2023, Cardano has absolutely rocketed. It went from um, 202 million ADA all the way up to 600 and uh, 23. So nearly a 3x in terms of TVL in regards to the native token. If we compare this to something like Algorand, since the start of the year, it had a bit of a spike up. Oh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, not in Algorand value. Start of the year, it had a bit of a spike up, but it's closed the year massively down. If we look at something like Ethereum, not to pick on Algorand, we like Algorand. We've interviewed John Wood. We think it's a great project. You can see since the start of the year, it's just been a continuous decline. Cardano is a pace setter and it is doing amazing things from the NFT space, which I think is one of the most vibrant out there. We may be looking if we really start to get a revival in, in, in prices of these tokens at NFTs and sort of um, smaller tokens, um, but we'll save that for another video. And then if we go to some Cardano blockchain insights, this is from one year ago, so a year to date. And we can even probably go a little bit further back. Cardano went from, what are we at? Total wallets of 3 million um, all the way up to total wallets of 4.2. Total ADA state has declined. Of course, that's quite natural in this kind of a market. You can see um, new wallets are getting added every single day. This is total value locked in DeFi. Average blockchain load. So it, it, the Cardano blockchain layer one was never meant to, just like Ethereum, potentially scale to, you know, hundreds of thousands or thousands of transactions necessarily. The layer twos were always a part of the roadmap, uh, and we've covered that in greater detail in our Cardano Cake video. Um, adjusted volume per day, and then you've got native tokens on uh, to, to Cardano, and you started at 6 million. You're now all the way up at 8.7. So I would say... Bravo Cardano. Um, and it's done very, very well despite everything it's going to continue to do so. On that note, I am going to love and leave you. If you have enjoyed this content, a like is always greatly appreciated. So as a comment, share this around in the Cardano community and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.